kind of that I've talked to, they're like, hey, there's a lot of potential in agriculture, but you're on on the board of um, Asso- associate of Ghana Industries, right? Yeah. So you you understand well the agri business and and the sector, right? Yeah, so I you, try. <laughs> yeah. So for people who are interested in investing in agriculture, um, in, in you know coming to Africa or do like agri business, what can you tell them and where where do you see opportunities in, in the sector? Look, it's it, it's it is where the money is. You know, I keep saying that when one when we spend a dollar to import that dollar is never coming back. But when you spend a dollar within your continent, that within each country, it rotates between six to eight times within the country. It, it, it changes hands within that uh, number of periods. So it clearly shows you that if you want to do anything, do it on the continent. You know, you know, don't, don't go sending money out to, um, when you go out buying a Jaguar or, you know, a BMW from outside, um, you're actually creating jobs for somebody else because somebody else then has to come to the factory to build one more Toyota for you or one more BMW for you. Um, you're not doing anything for yourself. You're sending that money out and it's never coming back. You're only just going to get this piece of metal coming to you. Okay. Um, the same thing, if we look at the, uh, the the chocolate industry, I mean, if 70% of the cocoa is going out of um, Africa, you know, and it's just a few players, it's Ivory Coast, um, you know, Ghana, Nigeria, um, you have some going in from Benin. If just between a handful, you know, of four four countries um, holds 70%, yet we're only competing in the 1.5 billion sector, okay, uh, which is the sector of raw material. Um, when you talk about the chocolate sector itself, the chocolate sector is $150 billion, okay? And in the one in the 1.5 billion, you don't even get 5% of that. So why are we not playing in the bigger in the bigger uh, pie? Uh, is it that we can't produce Godiva? Is it that we cannot produce lint chocolates here? Yeah, of course we can. And what is sad for me is that, um, and with all due respect to Belgium, they make the best chocolates, and there's no denying about that. Um, my question is that they don't even have one cocoa tree. They don't. They've never climbed a cocoa tree. Um, and yet, you know, the guys here are the ones going sweating, are not able to feed their family three meals a day you know, just to be able to get that pod, put it down there, sell it so that it can be exported, okay? Opportunity lies there. The opportunity for me is between merging the old and the new. And when I mean the old and the new is that technology is crucial. We need to move away from the archaic system of using a hoe and borrowing and, you know, figuring out to grow. We should be able to use machinery for this, okay? Um, if I quote Her Excellency, the former president of Mauritius, um, Dr. Amina Fukim, she's working on something where it is about taking the knowledge that the older generation holds. Because once these people die, they go with all the knowledge that they have. Where is the repository of, hey, listen, this is the best way to grow, you know, bananas or the best way to grow maize? Or because the young ones don't know. The young ones are all running into the urban center, wanting to be tech gurus you know, uh, want to get into social media, want to get into marketing, and nobody wants to really go and dirty their hands. But it's because we have made agriculture to be seen and to be considered to be a poor man's job. It's considered to be dirty. It's not considered to be modern. But I have a saying, and I keep saying this, that when God created one custodian for this earth, he created the farmer. Because you and I would not be sitting and having this conversation. There would be no president of a nation if they didn't have food on their table. It's because of the farmer. When you look at governments right now, a government employee can read the newspaper, be it in Rwanda, in Ghana, Nigeria, wherever. They can sit and read the newspaper from 8 in the morning until 5 in the evening and still earn a salary. But a farmer is not guaranteed of a salary because his salary comes in on being able to sell his produce. Okay? So... Are we guaranteeing that farmer that he, he, whatever he produces is going to be sold? No. So opportunity is there, and that's where we need to invest. I mean, what is it that we're doing by importing chicken and meat from, I mean, right now Africa is the biggest importer, I mean, some countries, at least in West Africa, from Brazil, from America, and from the UK. Are you telling me that we can't grow chicken in our own backyards? Poultry farming, potential. Cattle farming, potential, um, green vegetable, potential, uh, you know, converting your fruits into dehydrated products, potential. So I would like to see how we can use the youth 
with all these ideas that they have, you know, how can we address water problems, you know, like irrigation, there must be some, some technology or, you know, a robotic way or AI, I don't know, what is it that we could do with the knowledge that the youth have and what the older generation has in terms of, you know, if you plant it in this way, this is what's going to happen, this is the, the height that you need, what can be done to merge those two and be able to make it work? Because if there's no agriculture, there is no country, there is no people, there is there's nothing. Agriculture yeah. creates it's basically it's what creates the ecosystem, you know, for yeah. our existence. So the potential, that's where the money is. That's where the money yeah. is. Yeah. Perfect. So what so what kind of problems do you see right now in, in Ghana, um, in the agri sector? Like what kind of problems uh these farmers facing that people with the knowledge and people with the education can come in and help to solve? There. Um, I wouldn't say it's only an issue with Ghana. It's an issue everywhere. The biggest mm. problem that farmers have is finance because they're not able to have finance. And um, these are people, if they walk into a bank, they're expected to pay 24, 22%. They don't have that kind of um, leeway to take that kind of money. Okay. Um, secondly, if they were to go and get the finances from, uh, you know, the um, non-governmental organizations that are willing to give them, they're going to be able to write proposals. They have, they don't have that uh, knowledge in terms of how to do it. So I'm sure they can reach out to people within um, the continent or in the diaspora who can help them to write these amazing proposals, um, you know, and, and direct them to where these monies are. Um, secondly, also is, um, I think, you know, support to them to buy local, you know, if the policies are going to encourage more of importation, you know, then how do you expect to compete? Um, I'll give you an example. In Ghana, we continue to import tomatoes, tomatoes, red, fresh tomatoes. Yet we can grow tomatoes here. When our farmers were growing their tomatoes, their tomatoes were dying. Um, they had post-harvest losses because nobody was buying it because logistics is an issue. How do you move, you know, the tomatoes from the farmer to the market, you know? And then how, because these are things that you can't keep for too long, they're going to rot. So we need to start advocating for support. I mean, I see some amazing young guys. Um, I mean, there's a guy called David who's doing an amazing job um, in terms of poultry now. Um, there's another group called So Organic. They're growing organic food um, and they have markets every weekend, you know, for people who are interested in doing in buying organic. So you're seeing it slowly coming in. The challenge is, and again, more so for Ghana and across Africa, is that we are too into smallholder farming and not large scale farming. We need to start collaborating again as farmers. We need to move into large scale. Um, and more importantly for me is that how can we make farmers part of businesses? So if, for example, an investment is going to come into Ghana, for example, for you know doing, um, let's say, chocolate, or it wants to do um, corn, you know, grow maize and then convert it into uh, Doritos or whatever else it is. Can we make sure that the farmer that is supplying you or the cooperative of farmers of maize farmers gets at least 5% stake in your business? Okay. What that does is it means that this farmer doesn't have to go looking for different people to sell to. He's guaranteed that as he sells to, he's guaranteed of an income. And he also ensures that He's got to be price competitive because this is now his business as well. He owns a 5% stake in that business. So that way he also becomes, you know, um, cognizant of the fact to make profits. He's got to give his best, make the logistic uh, suppliers a partner in the business. Give them a 1%, give them a 2% in the business. So this way you're creating a system of players. You know, it's not about being selfish and saying, hey, we've come in and we're investors and we're putting out this huge fruit uh, processing company. But then who, you're not involving the people who are supplying you the fruits. How can you make them become a part of This is the only way you make everyone become a part of the wealth and everyone become rich in the process.